Okay, my family. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would lead us and guide us in all truth and understanding in Jesus Christ's most holy and powerful name. I pray for more wisdom and discernment in these days so we might know the truth from the adversary's lies. This is part three of our spiritual warfare instruction. And the Lord leads me to where we will be going today is to be speaking about. I want to do a little bit of a recap. The first thing we learn is that spiritual warfare is in our mind. Okay? It's in, a, in another dimension. Okay? Um, there's offensive and defensive spiritual warfare. The enemy tries to use de deception, temptation, and accusations against the brethren. Okay? And we must know that when we come before God and we repent, that we are cleansed by the blood of Christ Jesus. So then when the enemy tells us that we are unclean, we tell him, Get thee behind me, Satan. The Lord rebuke you. For I have been made clean by the blood of Christ Jesus. He will try to beat you down with guilt and condemnation. We have gone over that. Where the first thing we were taught was that we must put on our armor each and every day because we are soldiers. And we pick up and equip our armor and we speak with the sword of truth, the word of God. Proverbs 18 and 21 teaches us, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That is telling us that if we speak life, that is the fruit we are going to eat. If we speak of misery and death, that is the fruit we will eat of, and it is a rotten fruit indeed. So make sure to watch your words and use them carefully and teach your children the same. Speak life over each and every one of your situations. In Jesus Christ's most holy name. Matthew 4 and 4 tells us, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And he has left us a book of his written word. And that book is a book that we must be in, learning and writing it upon our hearts and our minds to be there when we need it. I know it's hard to do with our busy lives, but you have to give yourself some time to read the Bible daily, even if you read one scripture, even if you read one psalm, even if you read just a bit of it to your children or whatever it might be in your spare time. In Matthew 21 and 22, we are told, All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So when we ask God in prayer, we must act out in faith and believe that he's going to act on our behalf. Now we all know, it's not... He will give us things that are good for us. He will not give us things that will get us in trouble. So, he's not a genie. He is the Almighty God. We do not have three wishes. We have many, many things that we ask for him, and he will watch over us. However, he will not give us a billion dollars in order to, <laughs> to make us happy in this life. Um, he will take care of our needs. He will watch over us. He will keep us safe. He will be there for us when we call on his name. Okay. Numbers 23 and 19 tells us that God is not a man that he should lie neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. 
hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So God will not lie to us. What we need to do is stand upon the promises of God that are in our Bible. And it's always good to look those up and stand upon them. There's a book, a small book, it's called The Promises of the Bible. And uh, I had that book, and recently when I was looking through some things in my garage, I found it again, and I pulled it out because I want my children to read and memorize the promises of God so they can stand upon them as well. And um, if I had it right now, I would uh, give you all the information, but I promise you that in uh, part four, when it comes up, I will have it for you, the title and who the author is. Um, and uh, it tells you all the promises of God and the good things of God. Remember, every good thing comes from heaven, okay? And God will never give us more than we can handle. Okay? He is with us in our time of need, and he goes before us to make the crooked pathway straight. And we all know that in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. So our Father in heaven loves us also very much. And that um, when we come to him in prayer and we ask things of our Father, he is more than happy to give to his obedient children. He is a loving Father. And in Galatians 3, 2, and 9, we are told, And if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So, brothers and sisters, we know that we are sinners, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and by what he did for us. His blood that washes clean. When everybody who has accepted and believed in Jesus Christ, he gave the right to become children of God. That is written in John 1 and 2. I mean, 1 and 12. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. We talked about that, putting off the old man and putting on the new man, and your new life has begun. That is in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. So, by the blood of Christ Jesus, we can boldly enter into heaven's most holy place, okay? So that we can speak to our Father, so that we commune, commune with him, so that we can walk with him through the garden of his heart. That's because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, through his flesh, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the veil into the most holy place. And we give glory to God in the highest for Christ Jesus and for his blood that makes us clean. And then our bodies that have been washed with the pure water, as it is written in Hebrews 10, 19, and 22. One of the things that the Holy Spirit taught me was that using some of the words of the Bible when I incorporate them into my prayers. So in one, when I'm putting on the uh, armor of God, I'll say, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I do, okay? I put on, when I'm driving with my children in the morning, we do this, we go, we put on the helmet of salvation. Let the same mind be in us that is in Christ Jesus. We put on the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of of our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. We put on his belt of truth, for he is the way, the truth, and the life, and none shall come to the Father but through the Son. We put on and equip his sandals of the gospel of peace. We ask that he would lead us this day, so others might see his light shine through us of mercy, grace, love, and forgiveness. We pray to be as wise as serpents, yet as harmless as doves. We pray for more wisdom and discernment in these days. We pick up and equip the shield of faith, which quenches all the enemy's fiery arrows, missiles, darts, and all spiritual attacks that come against us. For it is written, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. 
We pick up and we equip the sword of the Spirit of Truth, sharper than any two-edged blade, and activated by the Word of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if God be for me, who can come against me? He goes before us, and he makes the crooked pathway straight. He's our shield, our buckler, and even our strong high tower. The Lord our God is our rock. We put our full faith and trust in him. The Lord our God is our banner. The Lord our God is our provider. The Lord our God is our healer. And the Lord our God is our rear guard. We put our full faith and trust in him. We give glory to God in the highest, for he alone is worthy of praise. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Glory to God in the highest. And that is an example of what I'll say of a prayer in combining words from the Holy from the Holy Spirit and from the from the Bible into my prayers. And whenever you're having a hard day or something's going wrong, you can say these promises of God throughout your day. And when you believe upon them, you'll see your life changing for the better. Remember, he shall never leave us nor forsake us. He knows what we need and what we pray for before we even ask for it. So trust in God, my family. And I'll have a, I'll have a, a part four out coming up soon. I pray for each and every one of you and your families. I pray that each and every one of you had a thankful Thanksgiving season and that you thanked God for all that he has given you and all the blessings that we have. For the roof over our head, the food on our plates, the running water, electricity, and gas that we have currently. I pray that you have thanked him for the Holy Spirit of God, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and most of all for Christ Jesus. I pray for each and every one of you and your families that Father God in heaven would place his holy fire hedge of protection round about you and your family on all sides, far above you and far below you. I pray he would cover your home and your vehicles, your places of work and worship, your pets and your provisions, your children, their schools, and their activities. I pray for those who cannot pray for themselves. I pray for my neighbors. I pray for my relatives and my loved ones. I pray for my brethren. I pray that Father God would place his same hedge of protection around you and yours that he has around me and mine. And I pray for the loss, for mercy, in Jesus Christ's most holy, holy name. I give glory to God in the highest, for he alone is worthy of praise. And I pray for all those that are in need right now, that Father God in heaven would show you that his arm is not too short to reach you in your time of need. In Jesus Christ's most holy and powerful name, we pray to our Father in heaven. Amen and amen. God bless you all.